Hey guys, it's video day. Are you guys excited? Oh, well, I'm definitely excited because I have a few minutes and guess what? Clear skies. I finally have clear skies tonight. So I have an exciting video, a little bit different than normal that I'm going to do for you guys. First, I want to tell you, I have a brand new camera. It is the Altair 269C color cool camera. It is a four thirds frame. It's going to be pretty awesome once I actually get to take my first picture. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you take your new camera that you get, how to calculate your back focus. I know we've talked about that before, but it's something that always needs to be repeated. How to accomplish your back focus amount so you get nice, perfect round stars in the corner. But then I'm also going to talk about what happens when you can't achieve focus with your standard focuser, which is exactly what happened to me. So I'm going to show you guys exactly how I solved it and y'all know what's next. Let's roll that intro. So I have this really cool new camera. Now I have had this new camera for gosh, six weeks and this might, might be the first night I actually get pictures with it. I know that sounds crazy, but it happens like this sometimes. So let me explain to you guys what happened to me. I have this fancy camera. I have an 8X reducer flattener on it and then I'm going to put it on my Altair Astro 80 millimeter telescope, which has hidden behind here a moonlight focuser. Now this focuser racked all the way out with the camera in was just out of focus. I mean, I really needed to go just a little bit further to accomplish focus. Well, what do you do if that happens? Well, what you do is you hope somewhere in your toolbox is you have these nifty little gadgets called tube extenders, okay? These guys, I've got one that has a 35 millimeter length and I have another one that's a 50 millimeter length. And you slide these into the end of your focuser and it gives you just that little bit of extra room to accomplish focus. So my problem was at the time when I first tried all this, I only owned a 50 millimeter tube extender. And when I put it in here, it was just too far out. I mean, even when I had the focuser racked all the way in, I still wasn't in focus. So 50 millimeters was too much. What I needed is what I hope I needed is a 35 millimeter extender just a little bit over what the um, total you know rack will go out but not quite as far as what a 50 millimeter will give me so I had to order this online and wait for snail mail for this to come in so this is the gadget that possibly has been holding me up on getting my first light image but that's okay I have clear night tonight after dark we're gonna come back here and I'm going to show you on my screen what it looks like trying to get focus on your brand new camera for the very first time. All right, so but first let's talk about back focus. The back focus amount is extremely important so you can get nice sharp stars in the corners and in the middle. Without the proper back focus distance, you'll get these little streaks going in on the corners. Okay, now the streaks go one way if you've got too much space and they go another way if you don't have enough space. So there's kind of a, a visual way and I'll show you that over here on how to figure out where your back focus is and how many spacers you really need. But let's do the mathematical way because you guys know I love math. All right, now this is an 8X, 8X flattener reducer. This guy needs 64.5 millimeters worth of back focus. That means from the top of this flattener, where it connects to my camera and everything, I need to have 64 and a half millimeters worth of distance, okay? Well, the camera, if you go to the manufacturer and look up their spec page, from the sensor to the outer lip of the flange is about 17 and a half 
millimeters, okay? And then I've got another 17 millimeters on this Altair filter holder um, drawer that I have here, okay? So you add those up together, you subtract them from 64 and a half, and you come up with the number of spacers and millimeters that you need. Now, it's always best if you actually just go out there, and I'm telling you to spend money, get a drawer full of these things. Different sizes, different connectors, because you never know which setup you're gonna need. And once you get one telescope set up with those spacers, trust me, you don't wanna take it apart again. For the next telescope, it's best just to have a drawer full of these things. They're not that expensive, five, ten dollars each. And um, that way you've always got them when you need them. So thankfully, in my drawer, I had these two extenders that met the gap that I need. So at the end of the extenders, I'm going to screw in my flattener, okay? And then all I have to do is slide this into the focuser. Now, now that I have this, I'm gonna take this 35 millimeter extension tube, I'm gonna slide it on there, it's nice compression rings, just tighten it on. And because it's meant to be in a compression fitting, this part is um, reduced down in size, okay? So this will slide right into the focuser. Very easy. I'm gonna tighten it in here. And the first thing that I'm gonna to wanna to do is I'm going to manually rack this focuser 100% in. Make sure everything is nice and snug. So when I open up my computer program, and I'll probably be using Sequence Generator Pro because you guys know how much I like that program. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to set my focus position, manually sync it to zero goose egg, okay? And we're gonna start focusing from that point out until we reach focus. Now the good thing about this right now, because it is such a wide field scope, and it is already polar aligned, thankfully, that Polaris is actually gonna be in the top center of my image. So I know I can actually just keep pushing my focuser out until that goes from this size down until it's just a tight little circle. And then I'll run the autofocus routine and get it done just like that. So that's what we're gonna do right after dark. And uh, yeah, I'm excited tonight, guys. I'm gonna get my first image. Now what do I shoot? All right, folks, so I'm over here in Sequence Generator Pro and I have all my equipment connected. And the first thing I'm doing is I took an image to see what I had in view. And luckily for me, one star showed up and I am aimed at Polaris at this moment. So what I need to do is move my focuser out some and continue taking pictures until that star is as small as it possibly can be. And then I can run the auto sequence, uh, the auto um, focus routine all right so right now my camera position is sitting at 800 and the first thing i needed to do because i manually cranked the focuser is i need to set it to zero to sync the encoders and it's saying are you sure you want to zero the focuser and i'm going to say yes i do and now my focus position is moving back to zero so the computer says zero and the focuser up there says zero on the encoders, okay? Now, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take this out, let's say about 2,000 points or steps, because these are like microns, they're very, very tiny. And let's just get a start at 2,000. And we're gonna say, okay, go there. And right now the computer says that I'm moving out and it appears that the focuser is moving out. I'll just put my finger up there and yes, I can feel it moving. So that is really good. We're good to go. So once it's at 2000, we are going to take another image on the frame and focus. I move my mouse up to the last image just so I can see if it shrinks or if it grows and then I have to determine which way I have to go. But right now it should shrink from where it is and it shrunk significantly so that's really good and you can see I've got some faint other stars that are just now starting to show up so the next one I don't need to go quite as far as 2000 um, 
uh, but I'm thinking more than 200. So I'm gonna hit the 200 course out two times. I'm gonna hit this little black star up here and this is where it's gonna calculate the HFR number for these stars on the next image. And then I just watch the numbers. Let's take one picture and put my mouse up here on the star. And hopefully I'm not going past focus. If it is, I need to bring it into something less than 2000. All right, it's downloading the image. It is now calculating the HFR for us. And right now my HFR for that particular star is 10.05. Ultimately, I want to get it down to the two range or less. Okay, so I'm going to bump the focuser out. Let's see, last time I did 400 and it shrunk it pretty good. I'm just going to do 200 course out. There we go. And I'm going to take one more 10 second image. All right, it's downloading now. It's calculating the HFR for me. And now we're down at 7.81. So 200 basically got me down 3 HFR. I want to go down a few more. I don't know if this is a linear scale or not, but uh, let's just try 400 again. So I'm going to do 200 out and 200 out again. And let's take another picture. And you just rinse and repeat this until you get it as small as you possibly can. You start seeing other stars show up. And then once you get it as small as you can just visually, let the autofocus routine take care of it for you. But so far, it appears that using a 35 millimeter extender was much better than the 50 millimeter. Now, if you see what just happened here, my star grew, so I just blew past focus. So let's go back in 200. I blew past it at 400, so I'm sending it backwards too. Let's take another image. And the last time when it was 400 in, it was at seven. So let's see what it calculates this new number as. It didn't pick up this one, but it picked up this guy over here. He's not that much smaller. Okay, let's go to, we're at 2,800 now. Let's go to 2,700. All right, and take my image. Right now, in, in all fairness with this, for the reason I'm doing 10 seconds, is I'm going through the tripand filter. In theory, I should have taken the filter out, gotten close to focus, and then put the filter back in, but also knowing that the filter causes me to need to go out just a touch further. So whether you're filterless or filtered, they won't have the same focus point. They will change. But as you can see, this does take a little bit of time. It's taken me as little as 10 minutes to do this. It's taken me as much as an hour to do this. It just depends on how many times I have to swap out the extenders or flanges until I get the right combination to accomplish focus. So don't go out there thinking it's just gonna be a snap. Plan it in, especially the first time you're running a uh, camera. It takes time. All right, well, you know, at this point, normally I wouldn't do this, but I do have some here lower. I'm going to go ahead and hit run and let's just see what happens. It'll probably take a couple times of this running before it gets close to focus. But currently this is set as 20 second um, exposures to do focus and that's because I am going through a filter. So hopefully I'm going to speed all this up for you through the beauty of video editing and we'll be back in just a minute. All right, now if you guys wanna know how to calculate what your nominal step size should be for this focuser, pop over to my website. I'll leave a link down below. I have a whole page that runs through the math for you. Now it's done run, one run through this here. It's at 85% complete, and it's gonna run through it again until it gets a whole lot closer. All right, we're in focus, 100%. Um, in focus here, it says the quality of this focus point is 98%. Really, that's not bad considering I am fighting a lot of light pollution. But in general, the sky up there looks great. Okay, so now I'm just going to close this and I'm going to go about my way and start imaging tonight. My camera's in focus and I'm really happy. 
So guys, if you like this type of video, please consider subscribing below, share, like this video with all of your astro friends. I appreciate every single one of you. And if you have any ideas, leave me comments below or follow me over there on Facebook or on my website. Send me a private message and ask a question. And if it's something I can make a video for, I will do that for you. All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was you found it useful in seeing how to come with focus for the very first time on a new camera. And just know it does take time, okay? This whole process took me almost an hour. Yes, that seems hard to believe, but through video editing, I did speed things up. So one hour to get a brand new camera in focus. Really? That's not too shabby. And it is 7.46 in the evening, well before my bedtime, so I should be able to get everything uh, calibrated. I'm going to shoot over there to calibrate my PhD. I'm going to attempt that multi-star guiding that everybody's talking about, and I'm going to take some pictures tonight. So I will see you guys in the next video. I am Amy Astro. I'm wishing you guys some great health, clear skies, and I love all of y'all. Goodbye, y'all. Teenagers.